Hello and welcome to part 4 of our Photoshop on the iPad series. In this part we're going to be looking at comping in a new background. As you can see on the left side of our image here, we have a distracting person at the bottom as well as a car passing. So we're going to replace that entire side of the image with a fresh image that we shot during the same shoot. So to do this we're going to use the place photo tool on the toolbar on the left side and we're going to pull in a fresh image from Lightroom. When looking for a clean slate we want to look for something that is visually similar. We're looking at the perspectives to make sure they match up, making sure that the light as well is relatively similar to our image that we're working on. Once we've got one that we think could work we're going to apply exactly the same settings and adjustments we did in the pre-retouching stage. So once the image is prepared with the same adjustments, we can export it to files and then we're going to put it in directly in Photoshop. Take the file that we've just worked on in Lightroom and we want to drop it into Photoshop. For now, we'll turn it off as a hidden layer. We're going to try out the subject selection tool that Photoshop has available where you just drag a rectangle around what you want to select and Photoshop will try and guess what the subject is. See how this works out for us. Okay, not great but we can use a few of the tools to make it work for us. So we're then going to take the quick select tool which is basically a paintbrush that allows us to paint our selection area and we're going to paint around the subject selection area that hasn't been selected. So we want to make sure that our selection is relatively accurate so look at the road sign here make sure that that isn't covered out. We've also got the traffic light and a few of the things holding that traffic light up. So now that we've got our selection we can apply it as a mask to our layer that we've dropped in. So there we have it, we now have our layer and our layer mask. What you'll notice is that in this example, our layer isn't quite matching up perspective wise, so we're going to have to change it around. How do we do this without shifting the image and the mask around? Well, on the right side in the toolbar, you'll notice that we have a detach mask option. We're gonna click that and what that will do is separate the mask and the image so that we can freely move the image around inside of our mask area without the mask moving as well. This will allow us to start reshaping the perspective to make sure it's matching to our original image. And there we have it. It looks relatively fine. Now if we flick it on and off you can see what that's done. It's basically just replaced that entire side of the image. There is one big thing is that the colour isn't quite matching up. So what we're going to do is add a clipped adjustment layer. Here we're going to use a hue and saturation layer. We can start playing with the lightness and the saturation and the hue of our layer. Here we're also going to drop in a brightness and contrast clipped adjustment layer so we can start playing around with the brightness. And once we're happy with those, what we can do is we're going to select them, we're going to create a new blank group, we're going to drop them inside of that group, and we're going to rename it Add Side Left. I tend to use left, right, up, or down so that I can look at that layer, I know exactly what side of the image it is on, so I know that when I flick it on and off, I should be looking in this area to see what it's actually doing. This tends to apply to bigger files, for example, when we're doing automotive retouching and you end up with a few hundred layers. It's just really important to structure your workflow, make sure you've named everything correctly from the start, so that as you go backwards and you have to backtrack and correct changes you made at the beginning, you're not getting lost in your file. So now we're going to create one more clipped adjustment layer, we're going to create another hue and saturation layer, and this is where we're going to use our gradient tool. So for now I'm just going to make it slightly warmer, I'm going to turn down the saturation just slightly, bring our hue all the way up, and making sure that we're colorizing, so we're replacing all of the color in that spectrum. We're then going to select our gradient tool over in the toolbar on the left side, click on our mask on that same layer, make sure we invert it so that it's black, and then we need to make sure that our gradient is on white and we're going to drag it up from the bottom. All this is going to do is allow us to change the sidewalk colour. You'll notice it changed down at the bottom as we mess around with our hue and saturation. We want to make sure it matches up as closely as we can to the pavement on our right side of the image. Here I'm just going to drag it above our two other adjustment layers so I know that the colour isn't being messed around with the two other adjustment layers too much. So now let's just look at our mask once more. What we're going to do is we're going to view our mask and we're going to apply Gaussian Blur Filter to it. This is the equivalent of feathering in Photoshop. Unfortunately, you are unable to feather at the moment. I'm hoping that Adobe will bring that feature in at a later date. So we're just going to blur the mask ever so slightly, just so it fits slightly nicer. Obviously, the background is already quite blurred anyway, so it does make sense. I'm not spending too long on it. Normally, I'd probably do a separate mask for the traffic light and the road sign and apply a different blur amount. 
So now as I flick on the different layers, you can start to see the changes that we've actually made in our image. So from our previous retouching phase where we did our basic retouch as well as our dodge and burn, those changes are still there as well as now our added Compton background. In the next part, we're going to be exporting our image from Photoshop in an uncompressed format and pulling it into Lightroom for a final grade.